What's happening guys, Joe Munoz, OneStepPrep.com. In a 737 video where we're gonna talk about the flight director, specifically in the takeoff phase, I've got a FMS trainer, uh, slap, it's really an automation trainer. We load the FMS, we work with the MCP, the mode control panel. Here's the point we're getting to. I'm gonna push toga and I'm gonna freeze it. Now, let's review the FMA, the flight motor enunciator. It says N1, heading select toga. So this is the auto throttle column. Right now, the auto throttles are commanding N1. Basically, simply put, takeoff thrust is being commanded because we're taking off. This is the lateral mode, heading selector right now is being commanded. That's your vertical bar. And toga is your horizontal bar. That's your pitch column. So let's take a look here at what exactly our flight director command bars are doing. And I applaud Boeing for doing this on the 737. You will notice, despite the fact that we are taking off, climbing, it is showing a nose down input. It's actually showing the horizontal bar, or the pitch bar buried down here in the brown part of the attitude indicator. So I wanna talk about why that is. And that is because in the early part of the takeoff roll, as we apply this takeoff thrust, uh, it's actually commanding for a forward input on the control column. And the A320, by the way, uh, the flight director doesn't command this per se, but the protocol is very much to put a, a side, half a side stick uh, input forward to hold the nose down. Boeing actually, this is why I say they did a nice job with it, is because they actually do command a forward control column input. Ultimately, what they're getting to, and this is actually a 320, but the point will be illustrated. Uh, this is a nice A320 Air Macau model from a student that came through here. Thank you. You know who you are probably if you're watching this for this model. It's great. Um, because the engines are under the wing, when we apply thrust, effectively the airplane is holding onto the engines for dear life. The engines are producing all this thrust and there's this thrust vectoring effect where the nose wants to come up. And ultimately we need to, of course, keep it uh, down on the ground to maintain good directional control, have good nose wheel steering capability as we steer our way down the runway. Now, I've never flown a CRJ, uh, so I can't really speak too much to it in terms of flight director commands, but I do want to illustrate the fact that the engines are on the tail, which means it's not really subject to the aggressive thrust vectoring effect by having an underwing mounted engine. And therefore, I would imagine, and I don't know this for certain because I haven't flown it, nor have I seen the flight director command bars, but probably this jet, you could comment if you have more insight on this, probably doesn't command this uh, nose down pitching uh, input on the takeoff roll the same way that you would expect from a 737. So the reason that's down, as I said, and to reiterate is to uh, emphasize to the crew to put that control column input forward. Now, notice here, uh, ground speed's coming aligned, the airspeed's coming aligned over here at 60 knots. Watch at 60 knots what's going to happen right over here at the attitude indicator. There's 60, okay? The flight director command bar jumped up to 15 degrees nose up. Now it's essentially getting you ready for later on through the rotation to start pitching up to 15 degrees. This is the initial indication we get on the 320. Uh, the 7.3 does give us that first nose down input consistent with that control column input uh, to be expected and placed on the early part of the takeoff roll. Um, and then later it transitions to the nose up. The 320 just goes straight to the nose up. Which one's correct? I mean, kind of tomato, tomato type deal. But I just do applaud Boeing for thinking to have the flight director more accurately reflect where it should be on the early part of the takeoff roll. So many other things we can extract from here and in fact when, when you come and train in person or even virtually uh, we use these types of uh, sims desktop sims and we go through all the automation and the fma modes and the mode control panel and how to uh, integrate yourself uh, through the automation working with uh, the autopilot and the flight director and the auto throttle uh, not just competently but confidently so you can go into your ride and ultimately fly the aircraft with success and confidence so with that being said, we got new updated pricing for 2025 for ATP, CTP, and all type rating programs. If you're interested, please very much navigate to our site, onesteppprep.com. Hit the Contact Us tab and reach out to begin planning and booking your training for the new year now. One last final note, I am doing a, a fundraising event uh, from now through May of 2025 as I go to uh, another bodybuilding competition. Um, there's a 16-week shred challenge. There's all kinds of things going on with that. And most importantly, we're raising money to donate to student pilots. We've done this for two years. Today, uh, this year will be the third year uh, that we're doing it. 
and ultimately we hope to to beat what we've raised in the prior two years combined so hopefully you not only contribute but if you have fitness goals in your sites for 2025 you join me on a 16 week shred challenge one step prep.net slash shred for that um, and of course as i mentioned for the courses one step prep.com all right so uh, subscribe if you haven't already done so like share turn on your notifications post your comments below and we'll see you on another youtube video here very soon happy holiday season a prosperous new year you know where to find us we'll see you here